Hi friends, this is Colby Cajero, the 33-year-old healthy breast cancer survivor. Today is Saturday, January the 8th, 2022. So happy new year. Today is the first video that I've made uh, since the new year. So I hope everyone had a wonderful ringing in the new year for 2022. And today is 38 days since I had a double mastectomy and the initial stages of breast reconstruction. So since my last video check in with you guys, um, I have been going through um, IVF treatments. I've had lots of injections to do, lots of doctor's appointments uh, for sonograms and blood work. And uh, my egg retrieval was two days ago. We got 11 eggs. And next week we will find out how many of those eggs became embryos. And um, so I will keep you posted on that. And again, once, I, um, once I've com fully completed the IVF process, I'll make an entire video just on that experience alone so that you have an idea of what to expect in that process. Um, so also since last week, on day 28 of my recovery, I got the green light from my plastic surgeon's office to start working out. So I talked to my coach and we strat or she strategized really and let me know her thoughts. So what we did first was um, she established a step goal. So, um, oh, by the way, I wanted to, before I go any further, the plastic surgeon's office said that I could not do any direct chest exercises. So no chest press, bench press, push-ups, things like that. And again, relayed all this to coach. So uh, coach Lexi came up with a plan. She recommended, let's start out with just a step goal per day, right? So she started me out at 6,000 steps per day, at least five to six days a week. And she said, if I was feeling really, really good, I could bump that up to 7,000. But she just wanted me to have a, a range so that way I could do as my body is telling me it's ready for. Last week, um, when I got that news, that was on a Wednesday. So last Thursday, Friday, and Saturday were training days, so to speak. Let Coach Lexi wanted me to just do body movement exercises only. Uh, because I have not moved very much in the last month. And she knew that I would be pretty sore just moving my body parts and basically just waking those muscles back up and letting them know, hey, we're going to get started um, moving again. So I followed coach's advice for lower bodies both days. Um, last Thursday and Saturday were both lower body days and just did body weight only. For the upper body days, I did a two and a half pound dumbbell, or not a dumbbell, but a little plate, two and a half pound plate, just for any exercises that didn't take my arms over my head. So like bicep curl, hammer curl, and, um, and bent over rows. So those things I did with a two and a half pound plate. All of the exercises that took my arms over my head, like, uh, what is this called? Overhead press. I did those with just moving my arms. Okay. So I will say that after doing that first upper body workout, my chest finally felt like it was actually connected to my body. And I didn't realize until, until, you know, that it was probably the next day. So last Saturday that I truly recognized that there was a disconnect, that I had actually felt a disconnect, that my chest actually didn't feel like it was part of my body. And so once I just did, again, just going through the motions, you know, moving your arms, you know, like lateral raises, overhead press, just things like that, just moving your arms just made my chest feel like it was actually part of my body again. So I cannot recommend enough at least moving your arms once you get the green light from your surgeon's office to actually start moving, okay? Again, even if you don't put, you do any weights at all, that's totally fine. Just get your arms moving. And I will say that doing that, I feel like I have 100% range of motion back in both of my arms. Now, I will say that I still don't have feeling. So, 
uh, both areas around my where my breast tissue was removed, still no feeling, and then still no feeling under the right arm where I had the lymph node biopsy done. But I do have sensation in my like, what river area, whatever you want to call this. Um, so it's it's just a little bit of getting used to when you start moving again. So uh, just keep that in mind. Don't overdo it. Listen to your body. This week I did two lower body workouts and then two upper body workouts. So for the first day of lower body, that's mostly just legs. So lunges and step ups on the bench, uh, glute thrusts and, you know, or glute bridge and, you know, just a couple of things like that. So um, for those days, I still just did body weight. The second lower body day uh, for my training is hip thrusts on the bench, uh, sumo squats, and like reverse deadlifts. So I, um, or sorry, Romanian deadlifts. And so I did the 45 pound bar. And I will say just holding that bar was taxing. And then, um, so I just did the 45 pound bar and that felt really, really good for those exercises. And I'm really, really grateful that I, I felt comfortable pushing myself. So it's kind of hard to know what you can and can't do, but coach recommended that if you can't do, or you not, you're not comfortable doing more weight, just slow your tempo down and, um, and just do your movements slower and more controlled. And that will also help. So I, of course, took her advice and was doing that. And I feel really, really good this week for the upper body workout. So on the first upper body workout, I did a five pound dumbbell for all the workouts. So all the exercises. And then today I just finished the second upper body workout of the week and I did 10 pounds. Now for some of the lifts, like the lateral, uh, lateral raises, 10 pounds was what I was doing before surgery. And that felt really, really good today. So I feel super accomplished there. For other things that for my upper body workouts, um, like the overhead press and um, bent over rows, I was do using the 45 pound bar plus. So I did not do that. Still just stuck with the 10, uh, 10 pound dumbbells in each hand and just like Lexi recommended, slow and controlled. And that felt really, really good. I do feel like I got a really good workout uh, for my arms this morning, especially uh, bicep curls and hammer curls because, um, because those, you know, I wasn't doing that much more than 10. I think I was at 17 and a half pounds for those before surgery. So 10 was slow and controlled, like slowing down the tempo really was, um, perfect for me right now at this stage in recovery. So really, really grateful for that. And some milestones that I've had since my last video were putting clothes on over my head. So pulling a t-shirt on over my head, pulling a sports bra on over my head. So if you'll notice, this is a regular sports bra and not the front zipper. I will say that the front zipper sports bras that I bought are more comfortable than this sports bra. Right now, my biggest challenge or um, just annoyance is this ever-loving chemo port. So right now, this bra is rubbing on the chemo port. So that's why I've kind of got the sports bra pulled over here, the shirt pulled over here. It's really frustrating. I'm trying to figure it out. I am not gonna have this chemo port forever. I basically from today until the end of chemo or until my second breast surgery. Um, they said they could remove the chemo port at my second breast surgery. Um, basically, we're looking at like four months, maybe five months. I'm not going to spend a ton of money on new sports bras or new bras for something that is just going to be completely different in five or six months. And I feel that way about the breast size as well. So with the tissue expanders, you know, we're still expanding and everything like that. So I just feel like it would be a waste of money to go buy a whole bunch of things right now. Um, I am looking at buying um, at least one sports bra. I'm trying out different ones right now. So once I find something that is comfortable, I'll let you guys know. I just, I haven't found it yet. 
and forget wearing regular bras. My regular bras are like totally don't fit right now at all. So we're just, no, no, they're not, they're not working out at all. So still trying to figure that out. I've gotten to the point now with this chemo port being just so annoying with sports bras that I'm considering just using pasties and calling it a day because here's the thing with these tissue expanders in my boobs aren't bouncing when I walk they're pretty fixed so that was honestly what we needed bras for right was to hold the girls in place well first of all I don't really have girls anymore and second of all there's no bounce there's no no nothing so I'm thinking uh, worst case scenario I'll just go to pasties until second cert until after all this is said and done with and and we'll call it a day but I haven't made a final decision about that yet so I'll keep you posted um another milestone that I've gotten to is I'm starting to sleep more on my sides now I'm still sleeping with the mastectomy pillow because I do like sleeping on my back I am mostly a back sleeper so um so that was not too hard for me to transition to with the double mastectomy surgery and so now that I'm starting to sleep on my sides, it's just gradual. So I'm, I've barely started just slowly edging side to, like on the side. So it's not fully on the side. Um, it does still feel weird. The left side for some reason is more comfortable than the right side. And that could be because all of right here, remember I don't have any sensate, like it, it's still numb. So it could be when you just put pressure on it, it just, it just feels weird because I can feel that I'm putting pressure on it. So if you've watched previous videos, it just feels like that same feeling you have when you sit funny on your legs and your foot falls asleep and you try to walk on it and just putting pressure on it makes it just feel weird. So that's the best um, analogy that I can come up with for, for that sensation and that feeling. And I, I'm thinking, my hypothesis is that just laying on that side just is putting pressure there and it just feels weird. So I'm still trying to get used to it, still uh, trying to do a little bit more. Another thing I started doing was sleeping without a bra on at all. So once they gave me the green light to start doing everything, I was, I was just like, you know, well, not really everything, but you know what I mean, uh, training and, and things like that. I was like, you know what, let me try sleeping without a, a, a bra on because, you know, I haven't, I normally don't sleep with a bra on. And um, so that was weird at first, but I've gotten used to it. It was just different because you feel the shirt. So again, no sensations here, but I could feel the um, the shirt on other areas where the sports bra was uh, protecting. So like in, in this area, you know, like it was just, it was just weird. I could feel the shirt on the, on that skin. And so that just, took me a little bit of time to, to get used to. And now it's totally normal. It's totally comfortable. Again, just a weird sensation to try to get back used to after the surgery. Um, so some things that are coming up are that I start back to work on January the 12th for two days a week for the rest of the month. I'm so excited about this. I miss my job. I miss my patients. I miss creating smiles and changing smiles and just, ugh. I'm just so excited to get back in there. And um, I'm, I signed up for, on January 16th, I'm signed up for a Wigs for Kids donation. So last year, around this time actually, my husband, uh, he had been growing his hair out all through law school and was able to donate 19 inches to Wigs for Kids. And, um, and it's a, just a wonderful program. So I went back to that hair salon. They're having like a Wigs for Kids donation day on Sunday, uh, January the 16th. So I am gonna go that day and get all my luscious locks chopped off and uh, help some kid somewhere uh, have, a, have a nice set of hair. So that's coming up. And then um, chemo starts February the 4th. So we do have a definitive date for that. And right now I'm just trying to prepare mentally and you know physically uh physically meaning buying anything that i need for support so a wig i'm working with insurance on that cold capping i've heard about uh to help save your hair i am going to go ahead and cut my hair short that way 
uh, just in case it does, some of it does fall out, it's not as drastic of a change. I did decide that that was the route that I wanted to take because my hair is so long and it has been so many years since my hair was short. I just feel like that would just be way too much for me to uh, emotionally handle at one time. So I'm just gonna, you know, gradually ease into that. And then, um, you know, I've figured out with this chemo port situation, shirts, jackets for chemo, you know, um, things like that. I've heard that, you know, ice, icing like your hands and feet will help with some of the neuropathy and things like that with some of the medications. So, you know, I'm just doing some research right now. I haven't bought anything special or anything like that. Um, once I feel like I have a handle on it, I will, will definitely make a video and, and provide all that information. I did buy some scrub caps today. Um, I woke up this morning and felt the need to go ahead and buy some scrub caps because I do want to go ahead and start wearing those when I start back to work. So that way my patients get used to seeing me in scrub caps in case I do lose all of my hair. Um, I have to keep my hair out of my face when I work anyway because who wants, like what patient wants, you know, hair dangling in their face when their orthodontist is working on them? Nobody. So um, I feel like, you know, scrub caps are the way to go there. So I just want my patients to get used to me seeing, seeing me in a scrub cap before, you know, before chemo actually starts. And that way it'll kind of hide it in case I do lose my hair and then it's not so uh, freaky. So, um, at least for my patients anyway. So, uh, that's happening. I will keep you posted. I do have a tiny head, so I don't know if these scrub caps are going to work. I may have to go get some custom made. I'll keep you posted. Um, that is about all for my update, uh, today and my progress with how things are going from surgery recovery. Um, today, my fun fact, because I am so excited about getting back out there and helping new, helping people transform their smiles. I have a fun fact for us that is um, along those lines. So on average, women smile 62 times a day, but men only smile on average eight times a day. So I just want to say, ladies, if you, especially if you're on this breast cancer journey, it's so important that you continue to smile because Number one, you're going to feel better for it. Studies show that even when women or when people are going through emotional times, just some, the act of smiling creates some sort of chemical change. And so, you know, even if it's fake, even if you have to force it, it, it seems like that is helpful to, uh, to whatever is going on. So keep smiling. The world needs it, especially if you're, if on average you're supposed to be doing it 62 times a day or more then show the world your beautiful smile. Don't let this diagnosis, this treatment, this journey take that smile away from you. And that will lead me also into uh, the scripture that I want to share with today. It comes from Psalms 33 11. It says, the plans of the Lord stand forever. And so what that means to me is that God's plan for me is perfect. God's plan for you is perfect. So he's had this plan for my life and for your life all along and it's perfect. I don't know what the man's up to. I don't know why I'm on this journey. You probably don't know why you're on this journey, but I trust him. I know that he's got this. I know that he loves me. I know he loves you and he will see me through this. And we're, it just takes one day at a time. And my hope is if, if you're in this journey that you know, I pray this prayer for myself, you know, God show me your will for my life. And I pray that, you know, God will show you his will for your life as well, because, you know, he has a plan for each of us. And that may look very different for each of us that are going through this. So, um, just hang in there, keep your head up, keep praying, keep holding God's hand because he will see you through this no matter what. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.